G'day, Sambo here. Saturday, 25th of March, 2017, it's about 10.30am. Tovercast day, we've had about 3 or 4 inches of rain here this month. Bees are going gangbusters. Every hive is bringing pollen in. Grass is getting long. Uh, January and February, this yard was pretty much brown. Because December and January have been that bloody dry. But I'm making up for it now. Of course, that means I'm going to have to mold at some stage when it's not wet. And today's video, I've been asked to give a bit of a rundown on how everything is connected for my solar power system. So I'll get under the, under the house and we'll run through that. So we'll work this in the order it goes from the solar panels. This cable comes in from the solar panels, runs through this circuit breaker up to the charge controller. There's the kid charge controller. Bringing in 250 watts. You've just seen how overcast it is today. And charge controller is in absorb boat. From the charge controller, cable comes back down to this circuit breaker. and out to the back of the inverter and I'll show you that shortly. I've got these circuit breakers here mainly so that I can electrically isolate the charge controller if I need to change any configurations or that. So it's just a matter of flipping both of these off and the charge controller is then isolated. This is where things get a little bit tricky with me because I've got this switch here to switch between two battery banks so the positive from my charge controller is hooked up here, this is the inverter side and my negative is hooked up to the back of the inverter, straight to the back of the inverter there. I could have done that with the positive as well, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And then positive to one bank, positive to the other bank. Uh, which one is which? This bottom one here, that goes to my 24 volt, 630 amp hour forklift battery bank. This one goes to the 24 volt, 375 amp hour battery bank that came from um, an emergency warning system at a shopping centre. There's my 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's not actually pure sine wave. That's just a reasonably good modified sine wave. Um, bus bar here, this is for earth or ground as Americans call it, so I've got earth wire comes out of the charge controller into the bus bar, I've got earth wire from the inverter into the bus bar and then that goes out to the earth stake and then I've just got a single plug, goes to a power board and that goes inside and that runs um, the fridge, the satellite modem, uh, lighting and the water pump. So I've got the computer going at the moment and the house is using 90 watts. Not bad. So that's it, hopefully that's good enough. Give a bit better idea of what I'm running. So these are my forklift batteries, bought them second hand. Yes, they're bulging. You'll probably see it a bit better with this one here. Doesn't matter, they're not being used at the moment. They're really there just for backup. These ones here, they're the ones I usually use. 10, 12 volt, 75 amp hour batteries hooked up in series parallel. And then just, just for shits and giggles, 
I've got these four 6 volt 127 amp hour batteries. Have a look. There you go. I paid $30 each for those. I can run the house for weeks on end just off of those because my daily power usage is only about 2 kilowatt hours a day. I need, I need less than a kilowatt hour to get through the night. So even on a rainy overcast day, like today, I could run these down at night and they'd probably run down about 60%. Um, run them down during the night, charge them up in the day. And the day is probably when I use most electricity. So anyway, hopefully that gives some idea of, a better idea of how I've got things hooked up. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.